Of all of the uses for the cloth simulator, a blanket is by far the easiest of all of them. So if you've been following the rest of this couch tutorial series, then this should be a walk in the park and it'll also be the final part of this uh, couch making series. Anyways, so blanket, you need to start with an object and that's gonna be a plane. Um, position it above. Now, the shape of your blanket can be whatever you want. I tend to think the rectangular ones look pretty good. So I'm gonna scale this, um, holding down control to be exactly 0.5, right? Now the reason <laughs> I want it to be 0.5, going by what was in the top left there, um, is that the next step is making sure that you have faces for your cloth simulator, otherwise it'll just look stretched. So in edit mode, I just wanna go control R and I can place one smack dab right in the middle, click, right click and now we have two faces, which means that now when we add a subsurf modifier and we increase the viewport amount, set it to simple so that the edges don't round out, um, all the little faces in here will be exactly square and the cloth sim will look lovely. So now we can add a cloth simulator, making sure of course that the cloth sim goes after your subsurf modifier, not the other way around. Um, and if you're not on frame one, it will move out the way. So just go shift left arrow, move that to uh, back to frame one. Okay. so. If we were to uh, just hit spacebar right now, you would see that it starts to fall. And assuming that the objects you have underneath it, that you have uh, turned on collision in your uh, physics settings, um, and the important values really for your objects that it's being collided with is uh, the thickness outer, that is the distance that it will give between there and the blanket. Um, and also the friction amount. If it's sliding off it, you want to increase it. If it's sometimes causing like jittery problems, it might be the, the friction is too high, but you know, play around with it. Yeah, see what you get. Um, now there is a big gap in here and that is because as well as the um, this providing the gap, there is also underneath the cloth settings, the object collision uh, distance value, which is, as we talked about in the cushion tutorial, way too high by default for almost everything you would ever want to use it for. So I use a 0 0.001, nice and low. Okay, um, I'm also gonna uh, scale this down. I don't want it to be too big. Um, now, the amount of geometry that you get is determined by the viewport amount, not the render amount. This isn't gonna be used at all, so we just don't worry about that. So I'm gonna go with five. Now you wanna play with that because obviously the more detail you throw at it, the more wrinkles you're gonna get. And as I've spoken about in the past, too many wrinkles, like if you go too fine and not only will it be the, the cloth simulator will be too long, but it'll actually look too small in scale in relation to the object that you have um, in it. So uh, anyways, I found that a value of five works well for this. Now you'll notice here that I've got a bunch of problems. Um, for one, it's clipping through an object which has collision turned on and I don't have collision for um, other things. So make sure that every single object it's gonna be colliding with, whoops, has, uh, has collision turned on. So I'll do that now, whoops, I'll do that now. Make sure that's 0.001. I'll just control C on that value so that I can just paste it and do it again, paste it, and then again. Okay, cool. So now uh, move that there and let's just see how this looks. Okay, it, it, it's falling too far as well. So by the time it actually touches objects, it's moving so fast that it's more likely to clip through things. <clears throat> Now, some things that uh, that can cause clipping is for one, it could be the gap, right? So if, if it's clipping through something, you might need to increase the distance between it, but you will also have a visible gap. Um, something I want, I, <coughs> excuse me. Something else I like to do is increase the quality of the collision. So it says collision iterations. The way I understand it is, is that between frames, um, like one frame to the next frame, there can be a lot of movement. The cloth can go from here to here. And if there's an object in between it, it'll clip through it, right? So that's generally what's happening. When you add, increase quality, generally what I'm understanding is that it's subdividing that frame and it's performing little operations in between it. So it's more likely to pick up something. So I generally find a quality of five works well there. And then the quality steps of the simulation, that's not related to... Uh, collision, I think. I think it's just the cloth in general. Anyway, I find 10, it, it starts to look a lot nicer. Anyways, now that we do this, it, it says that it should increase the simulation time, and I guess it does, but not as much as you would actually think. And you can see that we have a lot less clipping going on now that we've made those two changes. It starts to look really nice. Now, <clears throat> this looks way too... Um, 
hand place, right? It looks like you've almost ironed it in place, perfectly flat, and we wanna have much more wrinkles and make it look like the blanket was thrown on it. Um, and I've tried a bunch of things to get that, like I was like adding in a bunch of random objects above it so that it could collide and like fall and fold and all that kind of thing. And then I realized like it's, it's really easy. <laughs> what you need to do is if you wanna have like wrinkles and everything, just make it fall, but like at an angle like this. So I'm holding down control and in the top left-hand corner, I'm just, choosing a degree like 70 degrees like that. And then if you were to simulate it, <clears throat> what you would see is that it looks better. You get wrinkles. However, it also starts to, it almost looks like it's pancaking, right? Uh, if you come in close here, like these wrinkles aren't behaving the way you would expect. They're sort of all just sort of mushed in together. And for a while I was trying to figure out what was going on there. Is it something to do with quality? And then I realized like, there's object collisions by default, but there's not self collision by default. And that's very important because if you don't have self collision turned on, then of course, um, <laughs> it's not gonna know that there's other cloth for it to interact with. So before you simulate this though, by the way, make sure you change the distance because the distance value by default, if you have it set too high, which it is by default, those vertices, which are like four vertices like this, um, they will automatically start colliding with themselves for every frame of the simulation and it'll start to go ballistic and it'll actually freeze up Blender. Um, it's very, very annoying. So this value is way too high by default. So go 0 0.001. You can go a little higher if, uh, if there's any problems there. But anyways, once you do that, it will take longer to simulate. Um, not not too bad in this case, um, but not as long as it used to. So the, the recent update to Blender 2.83, which is what we're using, um, it's made it a lot faster. Um, self collisions I used to very rarely ever turn on because it took forever to calculate. Now it's a lot faster. And look at that, it looks a lot nice. Now, if you find that it's a little hard to read this jumbled up mesh, you can turn on shade smooth. And then I also, as well as that, I add a subsurf modifier after the cloth just to see how it looks. and. It doesn't look too bad. If you have some clipping, which you might have, you wanna increase your distance value. By the way, I will show you as well. Let's just turn off this because that will slow it down. Um, I just wanna show you what it looks like when you've got it a little bit too high, okay? Because it was something that I didn't pick up on. Okay, there you go, like that. When you start to see like it pinching or even any sort of movement in here between where it's starting to collide with something, that means your self collision distance is too high. So I just wanted to show that because uh, yeah, it's very important that it, it should fall and not react to vertices that close. So anyways, increasing that slightly so that it doesn't collide. By the way, you might also be wondering what about these other values up here? I tried decreasing vertex mass, which you would think you would want because how heavy is a blanket? Probably not point like 300 grams per vertice. That would make this uh, like, I don't know, what would it be? Like probably over like a hundred kilos as a blanket. But in this case, if you go really light, it just sort of takes forever for it to simulate and just doesn't feel right. And I don't know, I just found the default value works pretty well there. Something else you might wanna play with is shear. Um, I found like lower, shear by the way, is like if you've got a square, so that the face of a vertice, uh, shearing is when it allows the face to sort of move like that, like become like diagonal or a trapezoid, whatever that shape is called. Um, if, you, if you turn it up, it resists it and tries to keep everything a solid square face, um, which might not be what you want. So in our case, I find like a lower value of one to work just a little bit better. Um, sometimes you get like pinching and weird sorts of stuff on the edges of the blanket. So that can kind of fix that. Anyways, it's looking pretty good. Um, now the cool thing about simulations is that uh, very small changes in the placement of the cloth can have big impacts. So if your blanket was like, you know, pinching the edge of that, you just move it ever so slightly to the right and it completely changes the look of it. It's also why simulations are very frustrating because <laughs> you make one two, tiny little change and you get a completely different result and you don't know why. So um, yeah, it's a blessing and a curse, but just keep that in mind. If you don't like how it looks, try rotating it, positioning it, etc. cetera. Um, something else I'll do is I'll just move this like this, um, just to, you know, try and make it look a little less planned, a little less organized, like, hey, this was a blanket that was thrown and yeah, it's not gonna look as good as like somebody moving it by their hand or whatever, like a normal blanket would, but close enough. And that's, uh, that's, that's what we're going for the close enough approach. Hey, I like that. It's got kind of like an edge to it now instead of it being perfectly uh, perfectly aligned. 
So that's what it's all about, right? It's re-simulating, seeing what looks good, and, uh, and that looks pretty nice to me. Now, before you go and apply this, because we started with a plane, we shrank it, scaled it, etc. You need to uh, do your UV unwrapping now whilst you have the plane in this shape. So go to your UV image editor, which I actually don't like clicking because then it turns on the material preview and it takes lo longer to load and like, look what it's doing. It's like freezing up just because I wanted to UV unwrap an object. Anyway, so I'm just going to hit you unwrap. Oh, the other thing as well, we, our, our object, is not, uh, it doesn't have uniform scale. So always a good idea to make sure you've got uniform scale. I don't know if it actually interrupts the simulation if having a non-uniform scale changes the simulation. Don't think it does, but you know, nine times out of 10, the problems in Blender that you experience are caused by a non-scale, non-uniform scaled object. So just apply scale pretty much for everything. Anyway, um, yeah, I want this to fill the UV square. So I'm just gonna scale that by two. Um, and that's it. That's, that's all we need to do. So now run the simulation one final time. And now we're going to get to pick our frame that we want to freeze our blanket on and, uh, and then apply a material to it. And you're basically done. I like the look of this. Yep. That looks, eh, do we want that to be bunched up there? I might just wait for it and see if this, uh, little bit at the end there relaxes. Ah, nice. That's what I like to see. Okay, cool. So, um, you know, if there's a bit of a gap there, you could play around with some settings, change the friction, whatever, but I like the look of that. So I'm going to add in a, a subsurf after it just to see, just to approve it and go, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Give it the once over, not bad. Um, so you want to apply it in the order, top to bottom. So subsurf, apply, and then apply your cloth. And you don't want to apply this because you want to be able to control this in your rendering after the fact. So that's all I need to do. So the material, um, obviously this is a big part of the design of the overall look of the room that you would be rendering. Um, so yeah, pick a nice looking design blanket. Um, I'm going to be using this material from Polygon. I'll put a link to this in the description. Um, of course it is a premium texture, um, but it is also a really nice texture. <laughs> it's not just like a little lazy pattern that was thrown together. It's like interweaved into the fibers of it. So it's actually built like a real upholstery um, fabric would look, um, but it looks really nice. So I set up a super basic lighting setup. Um, if you wanna know a full tutorial on that, I'll put a link up there. It's the exact same method that I used for the studio lighting for the chair tutorial. Um, it's just two lamps on a beveled plane. The good news is, is that once you put in like the right amount of effort into all the detail and the wrinkles and all that stuff, it rendering is really quite easy. Um, and then that secret little magic trick to make it look really nice is uh, just to use high contrast in your render settings. Um, it just tends to look a lot nicer. Um, I'll put a link where you could actually buy this couch. Um, I'm putting it on Gumroad. Um, if you wanna buy it, it'll support the channel and also you can pull it apart and see anything that was different to yours if you wanted to. Um, the other thing I'll say is that if you follow this, you're probably wondering like how on, on earth does anyone find the time to make chairs and couches for an archivist scene, right? When you've got all these couches and stuff. The answer is, is that professionals don't. <laughs> if you know how to make one couch, um, there is really not much benefit in modeling another one and another one and another one. Um, you will learn maybe little things throughout it, but it's not gonna be that helpful to you. So professional archivist people always download couches, models, they just used bought assets in there. It is not cheating. That's a very, very bad mindset to have using paid assets helps you deliver the final scene faster, which helps you get paid and helps the client get it out um, on time. So um, yeah, don't feel bad about buying a couch in the future. Now you know how to make one, buy them and uh, and go from there. So thank you for watching this long extended uh, couch modeling series, and I hope to see you in a future tutorial. Bye.